Hey my friend, today I'm so excited because I can try for the first time the new neighbor wet plugin. That's right, my favorite reverb pedal ever is now in a plugin so you can use it in your recording software. I am so pumped because I have never found a reverb plugin that I like as much as my pedals. So that's why I always record the sound of my pedals and I almost don't do any processing on the track afterwards, but that might change with this plugin right here. So uh, in my software, I have recorded a small, uh, just a stereo track with nothing, no effect, no pedals used, and it sounds like this. So very, very dry, and now let's activate the plugin to see what it can do. So we have a lot of parameters here, a lot more than what we would have on a new neighbor pedal, but uh, that's really exciting to have as much. So this is the default setting. Uh, just We're just gonna try it with the default settings and see how it sounds. That's already so good. All right, so let's play with the fader. So the first thing I see is, uh, I wonder if we can go 100% wet on the mix and only hear the reverberated signal. So let's try this. Yes, we can. Now we hear only the reverb and not the dry signal like this. So between 1 and 99, they are blended together. But this is just the reverb. So that's already very good to have this option right here. And then we have the delay and attack. And on New Neighbor's website, this is really helpful. They have some little graphics like this. So the delay is pretty much the pre-delay. So it's the time before the, the, the reverb kicks in when you play, right? And then the attack is more the shape of the early reverb tail. So when it's at 100%, it's like the full triangle, full attack on the reverb. But with lower settings, you can really soften the, the kind of the tail of the reverb so it's it's softer and it's like a little fade in on the reverb instead of boom, here's the reverb. So um, let's try both of them. So the delay is pretty straightforward. It's the, the timing. So we have between 10 milliseconds and 500. So at 500, it's like a delay pedal. You're going to hear the copy afterwards. So let's try it at max. It's like a delay pedal, but it's a reverb instead. And at 10, pretty instantaneous. And then you can go in between. It's really nice to have some pre-delay sometimes because the attack, your the picking attack of your guitar is uh, the reverb is out of the way from it, so it drowns the dynamics of your playing a little bit less. Uh, of course, now you can go way farther and it sounds more like a delay, but between 10 and 50, 60, uh, these could be great settings. And now the attack, when it's 100%, like I said, it's the full triangle, and it really softens it um, when it's a uh, lower setting. So let's try this. So full attack. Softened. So it's more diffused, it's like. You hear it as like a. 
like I, when I open the attack. It's more aggressive with the attack here. So the default was uh, 75, which I ri liked really much. And the decay right now, we have a lot of decay. So from 0 0.3 seconds to 120 seconds, you have two minutes of decay available. So at six seconds, it's really beautiful. But you can go so far. Oh my god, that's too much. That's more than you could ever need, but it's just really nice to have the option. Now it sounds more like a horror movie soundtrack with all the resonance. But let's say that you have a very, very simple chord progression that stays in your key because right now my chord progression takes chords a little bit out of the key. So that's why the resonance sounded a bit weird with the DK. But let's say you have four chords all in your key, standard chords. This is just the, the DK just gonna congeal all the notes into a big cluster, but a good cluster of notes because they all belong to your scale. So that could be something great to really push the limits of the DK. But for now, we're gonna keep a, a good level of it. And then you have the EQs and filter and damping available, which can, you can really carve the tone that you want on your reverb. So the filter is pretty straightforward. It's like which frequencies you allow your reverb to ring in. Uh, so most of the times it's a good idea to add a high pass filter and filter a little bit of the very, very lows which are um, most of the times for bass or bass drum and the really bass frequencies that the guitar doesn't shine a lot on it. So it's nice to filter some of them uh, for your reverbs. And uh, you can filter some of the highs too, so uh, it's smoother a little bit. So the default sounds like this, but I'm gonna play a little bit with it. So now let's say I want a very low reverb sound. With 100% mix, you're gonna hear it even better. So now I can shape the low frequencies. Let's try some highs. So now if I put back the dry signal, the reverb now is just the, the little so you can shape the, fre the frequencies that you let pass, which is really great. And then the tilt EQ is gonna tell where is the middle of it. So now when it's at zero dB, the middle is 500 Hertz. But uh, you see on the little graphic here that when I tilt it, it's like more towards the high frequencies and more towards the low frequencies like this. So the shape really goes oh high or lows like this. So let's try it with the sound. So you can really put some emphasis on which one. And in conjunction with the filter, you can really find that sweet spot frequency to let your guitar tone shine with the reverb. And that's not it. You have the damping uh, controls here. Because uh, in a real room, a real environment, the, the air absorbs the higher frequencies a lot faster than the low frequencies. That's why in a home studio or any studio, it's a good practice to have some bass traps in the corner because the low frequencies are going to rumble in the corners while the high frequencies are evaporated quicker. So uh, the damping is kind of to replicate this natural feel. So here we have a three decibels of damping on a 10K Hertz uh, frequency, which is the, the, more, the most natural you can have. 
but you can decide that you're gonna damp some lower or higher frequencies and at more decibels or less. So you can see on the graphic here how it's gonna it's gonna be. So now it's the natural one, natural setting. So you see here it's the the graphic shows the damping. You see the diffusion that gradually fades like this. This is more natural. And then you can damp some lower frequencies if you want. Or higher. And you can go extreme. Because if you go no damping, let's look at the graphic. It's all very even, like it diffuses evenly and fades evenly. But with the damping, it's like more, it comes in a box. So you can really filter with the filter, tilt EQ and the damping. You have all that you need to really carve the tone that you want for your reverb. But I think that the, the default settings that they've put, the tilt EQ at the middle, 200 high pass, like 10K or 9K low pass, and then a damping of 3 dBs at 10K. This is really natural and it sounds great like this, but you can experiment. And then you have the good stuff. You have the modulation here. So I find that new neighbor uh, reverbs are always very musical when it comes to the depth of the reverb, the modulation. So everything is kind of a sweet spot in it. And when you see the rate of the modulation, it's like between 0 0.5 and 2. So it's nothing too crazy uh, on the rate here. So it always stays musical. And then the pitch is in sense. So these are the sense are just fractions of tones. So at one cent, it's very subtle and it's more prominent at eight cents. So let's try at four cents and a really slow rate. You really hear it when there's more. So now it's more flat. Now it's more like it moves more. And at eight, you have more of the curve. And now you can play with the speed. But even at the maximum right now, I find this is pretty musical. But I like really low speeds. Maybe three, four cents is really good. And then you have different kinds of LFOs. So from what I understand, there are so many more parameters on the modulation, but they are rather, they are rather uh, give us, they'd rather give us different LFOs so that it's each a different sweet spot on the modulation and we just have to control the speed and the pitch, which is really great. So I'm gonna put a higher pitch so we can really hear the difference between all of them. It's really subtle. You see the tone changes a little bit. I feel there's more movement in LFO too, but it's really, really subtle, but it's just some small flavors that you can choose from with your modulation here. And then you have the fidelity, so you can play with the, the bits, the bit depth and really crush your reverb. So one bit, it's just four bits. 8-bit. I thought with 8-bit it would be still more crushed. But we're gonna keep that to 24 bits right now because this is the highest quality. And then we have the width. So uh, now my track, as you can see, is a stereo track. 
on left and right, but I can decide to go back to mono at 0%, 100 in stereo, and you can go up to 150%. So it's an exaggerated stereo effect like this. So let's go back and forth. So this is the, the standard stereo uh, reverb. Mono. Dead center. We like a, a spread, don't we? So back at stereo. And then exaggerated. So you need to be wearing headphones. You're not going to hear the difference on a just a small phone with just one mono speaker on it. But with headphones, it's like a really added stereo, exaggerated spread with it, which is really great. But I'd rather keep it at 100% like this. So this is such a great sounding plugin. Just the basic settings. Wow, I love it. This is everything I love about the wet and more. So yeah, that's an outstanding plugin. Good job by New Neighbor. Once again, you've done a fantastic job to create the best reverbs. Ever. And if you are interested to learn more and get that plugin yourself in your software, you can click on the first link in the description box to go to New Neighbor's website. Full disclosure, this is an affiliate link. I am an affiliate for New Neighbor. I've used their pedals for many, many years and they are the best. It's the best reverb algorithm ever. So I'm happy to promote uh, their products. So full disclosure, it's an affiliate link. Uh, I would get a small percentage of this, the sale if you get the plugin at no extra cost to you. So if you want to encourage me and the uh, good people at New Neighbor, you can click on the first link in the description box and get your own copy of this beautiful plugin. So thank you very much for watching. If you have some questions, use the comment section and until next time. Au revoir.